So I'm going to make a new video, I haven't made a video in a while, about how to convert an R12 system, AC system, into a R134A system. So, what I've done is on my swather, I've taken off the, the evaporator, a lot of the hoses I took off, and just checked them out with the air compressor, made sure they're nice and clean. Um, when I cracked the system, there's, there's pretty much no Freon. No pressure, no nothing in the system. Um, I checked the con compressor to see if it still worked. Compressor still worked. And then uh, cracked the lines and figured out, okay, well, there's nothing in the system. That's why it's not blowing any air. Now, as you know, R12 is pretty expensive. It's uh, about $300 for a 30-pound bottle is what I can find the cheapest. Of course, you need a license to do that. So I've decided to convert my R12 system into a R134. So what I've done, like I said, I took off all the parts, pretty much the evaporator, the dryer, the hoses, the condenser, and I've just been slowly, you know, working a little bit at it a day, taking uh, all the oil and anything, any sludge, cleaning out all these condensers and, evap and the evaporator real nice, cleaning out the hoses with air, air compression and and the thing you need to do mainly is take off your dryer and uh, replace the dryer. That's a big plus with any, uh, once you crack the system you have to do that. So I took off the hoses. That's pretty much all the parts right there I keep in the garage so they don't get stolen at night. And if I walk over here I have my AC compressor. Over right here I set up two blocks and drain the AC compressor completely out to drain it you know here's your AC compressor and to drain it I only got that much out when you drain it you have to turn the clutch now when you turn this this isn't the clutch you have to turn the part in the back and you can hear that this when it magnetizes once you turn the compressor on and jams in and actually is able to spin the compressor so you have your pressurized and your low pressure line. Now most compressors, if you're going to do an R12 to an R134 switch, you got to find the right valve fittings. Of course, me, I have the valve fittings that uh, I have the pressure gauges that I can fill either R12 or R134. So I'm good there. Um, most people have to take off these valves and switch them out to more compatible with the R134 that you can buy at Napa or Auto. I'm buying from a, a huge wholesale. Um, so, like I said, this is a HG134 HG1000 air compressor from right here. If it levels out, it's to come say. There we go. That took a while. Tecumseh Products. And it's a 1976 model was when this one was made. Everything works on it. I'm pretty impressed. I thought I was going to have to buy a new compressor, but I'm pretty glad I don't since that can be expensive. Um, as I was saying, the reason I'm doing this is because the R12 is about $300 for a 30-pound Freon jug. And the R134 is only... 160. So here's a nice view of my swather and what I'm trying to get AC in since it's summer here in Arizona and without AC you pretty much sweat your brains out. When I got to the evaporator mounts right here on these brackets I noticed these lines right here to the hydrostatic oil cooler for hydraulics was pretty bad so I replaced those lines. Those lines were hard. It was a half inch they're hard to get on and they still I'm still working on them in the back where they connect into the metal lines but here's one of the lines that I I cleaned out that goes to the system this, since this is where the condenser the evaporator mounts and then uh, the air compressor mounts right here hooks up to this hanging uh, belt driven directly off the PTO mounts on this bracket and then goes from there roundabout to the evaporator to the other side and on to the cabin. Now the cabin was pretty dirty inside when I 
took out, as you notice, I took out and cleaned out everything. There was a bunch of rat poop up in there, and I, I don't think that's a fun way to breathe in nice air. So I cleaned that all out, took out the condenser, cleaned it out, and uh, compressed, uh, put the air hose attached to it, made sure there's no leaks anywhere, and hooked it all back in. I'm in the process of putting everything back together. My fan blades are right in here. I'm gonna blow and then you have your AC compressor and your, your, uh, um, your cold air and you're uh, just turning on the system on my here old swather. So, like I said, you wanna crack all the lines, get out all the oil, old oil which is a mineral oil type substance. It's, I don't think it's PAG-20, but it's something compatible with R12. And the only thing uh, you wanna do when converting over to uh, R134 is use an ester com compatible, is the ester oil is what I found is compatible with 134 and R12. So I'm gonna use that in my system and I'd recommend doing the same. Um, just so you don't have to clean it out with AC flush, which can be pretty expensive. But you still want to clean out all the old mineral oil that was in the system from 1976. And um, after I get it all back together, I'm going to stick nitrogen in the system to pressurize it, see if there's any leaks anywhere. After the nitrogen, and check for leaks, if there's any leaks, replace those leaks. After that, you evacuate the system. Um, once you evacuate the system um, and get everything, all the nitrogen and everything out of it, I'm going to add in my ester oil. And my, on my, you had to look up, you have to look up how much ester oil you put in each part of the system. So for mine, it's, it's 11 ounces throughout the whole system, 6.5 ounces in the air compressor, an ounce in the evaporator, ounce in the condenser, ounce in the dryer and then a few more ounces in the lines you know just just because the lines are so long and after I add the oil I'm gonna add my 134 which I'm getting a 30 pound for 120 bucks and then I'm gonna check the after Freon and oils add I'm gonna check my AC after everything's back together and hopefully I got some cold air blowing I'll uh, post a video when it's all said and done and let you know how it goes. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment or uh, subscribe below. Thanks. Bye.